Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this video. And so we are back with another hurricane season countdown video. We are currently 87 days away from the official start of the hurricane season, which is of course the 1st of June. And so in this video, as per usual, uh, we're going to be talking about what's currently taking place across the Atlantic, but we're focusing mainly on the Caribbean. We're going to talk about what is expected throughout this week. And also we're going to touch on the ENSO or the El Nino Southern Australia. And we're going to briefly talk about what is currently happening with it as well as what is expected. And so if you want to find out all the information, please stick around. And so before I go into details, however... Alright, and so first up, we are taking a look at the Atlantic Basin. We see that we don't have a whole lot going on right now. Things are mainly quiet. Uh, but as for the Caribbean, we do have moisture streaming in from the Atlantic thanks to the trade winds. And then there we have that spot of some deep convection uh, that we don't normally see these days because things are pretty dry and quiet. But we do have that area there likely resulting in rainfall in some of the countries within that area. And so as we take a closer look at the Caribbean we definitely see that we don't have much going on we just have all those clouds making their way by uh, probably bringing with them a stray shower or two but nothing very significant as of right now and so next let's go ahead and take a look at that dry air map and see what is currently taking place and so we have the different colors here that indicate how much dry air is in abundance and so as we go from the reds to that pinkish shade that is when we have a lot of dry air present so we definitely won't see uh, any sorts of rainfall in such conditions because things are just too hostile and then as we head to the lighter yellow shades that is when things are more conducive but still some dry air present just in minimal quantity and so now uh, we're seeing on this map that we have quite a bit that is present out in the Atlantic and also off the southeastern coast of the U.S. and the Gulf of Mexico but looking at the Caribbean we have a little less so some areas don't really have any uh, that is persistent there at all such as in portions of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico maybe some sections of Jamaica and some of the islands of the Lesser Antilles so uh, things are not so intense in the Caribbean in terms of all that dry air but definitely just off the coast of Africa the Cabo Verde Islands probably facing some very hazy conditions uh, because of all of that dust and so all this dry air it really helps to limit the amount of rainfall that is expected and that is why there hasn't been any significant rainfall events for most areas even though some areas might experience some heavy rainfall for some time but for the most part things are not so intense and so as I speak about that let's go ahead and take a look at that total accumulated precipitation map uh, we're going to be taking a look at maps from different models including the gfs uh, and the euro model and so let's go first to gfs and so this is by Wednesday of this week on the 9th of March. And so we have the different colors that indicate the amount of rainfall in inches. And so all of those green shades and that very dark blue shade is indicative of just about an inch or under an inch of rainfall. And so as the blue gets lighter and we head to that lilac shade, we have more totals that are expected. That lilac shade, that very light lilac shade is indicative of about two inches of rainfall. But we're seeing that we don't have any of those colors uh in the Caribbean region at least until Wednesday as being predicted here by the GFS. So the GFS is agreeing that most areas are likely to expect just an inch or under an inch of rainfall but nothing very major between now and the midweek. However as we head to Sunday we see that more areas are expected to have a little bit more rainfall and we even see up in the US where we have a lot of those southeastern states that are going to be in those shades of purple that indicates that they might have up to probably about four or five inches of rainfall in some areas but that is due to the weather systems that the U.S. has been dealing with for the past uh, few months. But as for the Caribbean we really uh, mainly see just about an inch of rainfall that's expected but some sections of Central America and also some spots across the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico and uh, the Dominican Republic we do see some areas where maybe up to two inches of rainfall are expected so there are likely to be some times where we have some heavy rainfall but again nothing very major is expected as of right now and then let's go ahead and see what the euro is expecting 
and so the furthest that this model goes is up to about Thursday on the 10th of March and so between now and then the euro is showing that most of the Caribbean is going to be under an inch or just at an inch of rainfall uh, similar to what the GFS is showing and so the icon model is also agreeing with that general consensus of not a lot of rainfall guys so nothing very major to expect but it never hurts to bring an umbrella with you as you go about your day so that is it in terms of the rainfall and so now let us go ahead and talk briefly about the hurricane season okay so this graph that you are seeing uh it is a nino 3.4 index and so uh, this is basically showing the value of the Enso region that is located over in the Pacific and I actually did a video on this so if you guys aren't so clear on what uh, the Enso is or how it works you can go ahead and watch that video the link to it is in the description down below and so that dotted blue line is actually showing the value of the Enso uh, from the latter part of last year up to this point and so the different values here and so the first thing to understand is where we have that zero uh horizontal line right there that is really average and so as we have plus 0.5 plus 1 plus 1.5 that is where we have warmer than normal temperatures so we're increasing that is why we have a positive sign there however as we go beneath that line we see minus 0.5 minus 1 minus 1.5 that is when we have a decrease in temperature so the latest value as of right now is minus 0.9 degrees celsius below normal so uh, that is indicative of a La Nina because once we have minus 0.5 or lower we are really in a La Nina and we see that this uh, dotted blue line has been fluctuating there and at one point progressing into February we see that it was just at that 0.5 line but then we have the value gradually decreasing but it is actually fluctuating right now so for the most part the conclusion is that we are in a La Nina and so as long as we have the value remaining below uh, minus 0.5 5 degrees celsius indicative of la nina and so the lower this uh this dotted blue line dips the stronger we have the la nina or the cooler conditions are over in the enso region and that is going to influence the hurricanes here over in the atlantic region whenever the season begins and we can expect to see quite a bit of activity in a la nina season but we really have to wait and see what's going to be happening because there are a lot of uncertainties on the line and we are still Still pretty far out I mean 87 days away but that is uh, pretty far out guys and so as time goes by however we will see what is going to be happening we will have a better picture and of course I will keep you updated as time progresses and so that is really it for this countdown video and so guys if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can and just remember to always be with wise